Hey everyone, uh, my name is Matthew Wong, and today I'm going to show you how to automate uh, Waves Tune real time for live performance. So I did a similar video like this on, uh, I think it was the Interi's Auto Tune real time, and I've actually had two friends who watched that video and who requested that I do one on how to do the same thing in Waves Tune real time. Uh, Waves Tune real time, it's awesome. It's a way cheaper alternative. It sounds different, you know, it's not auto-tune, but it basically does the same pitch correction kind of thing. Um, and you know what? Let me do this from scratch. I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to grab a fresh Waves Tune real-time. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, the M versus the S. M is mono, S is stereo. This is a vocal, so one microphone, so I'm just going to use M. And uh, yeah, defaults to this, and... Let's say that I've got a song here, and this song is an F because the splice loop tells me it's an F. Uh, <laughs> so let me just press play real quick. Cool. Fun sounding song. Uh, not going to win a Grammy for that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I can tell it's an F. So I hit F and natural minor. It's F minor. So if I start singing, uh, especially if I have the note transition really quick, uh, I'm going to sound incredible when I sing over this. And I could just do whatever I want. Ooh, ah, ah, I can sing over this loop. And yeah, that's basically it. <clears throat> we're done. But no, we're not, because I have a second song in my live set. And this other song is in D, as the splice loop tells me here. So if I try singing with my autotune set to F minor over a loop that's in D, everything's gonna sound terrible. Okay, so let's not deal with that. So easy, I switch to D and just click there. But I can't click that mid-performance because I'm focusing on connecting with an audience or whatever else. So what we have to do is go over here. I'm gonna press A to open automation view. I'm also going to open over here this little device window so I can see all my automatable parameters. If you don't see all of these things, if you just hit configure and then you move any knob you want in the interface, for instance, if I move this beautiful format knob, uh, oh, actually maybe that's not an automatable parameter. I don't know. But basically, yeah, if you hit configure and you move any knob inside of the plugin, you'll see it appear over here. Um, so in this case, I need to set my scale root. So if I, hit scale root, D, and I just click over here, you'll see it says D. And then this first one over here is in F. Uh, they both happen to be minor, natural minor. So let's go over to this loop here, and this is our third song, and this one's an E major, as the splice loop very, very luckily tells us. So I'm gonna switch this one instead of a natural minor. We're gonna go find major and it's not the greatest interface here you do have to mouse around a bit but yeah and then this is also in e major so i click over here to e and I go here d d sharp e um you'll notice that everything kind of grayed out sometimes it happens with automation in ableton so you just have to hit this little button over here and everything re-enables uh, i forgot what the button's called um but yeah, it looks like the little arrow. Anyways, now if we have all our songs here in arrangement view versus session view, uh, I can go through all of them. So I can sing here and I'll be in F minor. F minor. And then as the track continues over here, you'll see it automatically switch to D minor. This song's in D minor. I think that was in tune, really. That's more on me, not auto-tune's fault. And then if I click over here, we're in E major now. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm not a good singer. By the way, auto-tune and pitch correction software won't make you a good singer, um, but it can help. You sound a little better. Um, anyways, if we want to go into session view and do all the same stuff and load our songs here, we do have to think slightly differently. So the main difference here is I'm gonna record what's called a dummy clip. So I'm just gonna record um, 
it doesn't matter. It's, we're not really using this. Cool. That's a dummy clip. Now, ideally, I'd extend this whole clip uh, a little longer, but I can't. If I try to click and drag, it won't let me uh, because there, we didn't record any more audio than that. So what I have to do is go here in this clip box to end, and I just drag it out far. And then now, oh, and also, uh, typically you're in auto or off in terms of monitoring over here. So if you hit in, we're not going to hear any of the audio on this track, which is ideally what we want. We want to sing, and uh, this is just a, a track so we can have our automation that we've been working with. So if I click here and go to my automatable parameters, you'll see them kind of save over this, um, this clip. So now if I take this clip and I drag it over here, I'm going to rename this F minor. Though I'd probably rename it to whatever the song's called. And in the clip, you'll see all these automated parameters, natural minor and F minor. Our second song, if I drag it correctly, it's in D minor. So I'm just going to click and drag it, hit tab, move it over here and delete that. And now we have song two, which is in D minor. So let me just drag this clip down one, double click so I can edit it. And the only difference here is I want this root instead of F minor to be D minor. Our last song over here, uh, it's called full dance hall something. This one is E major. So I drag this down. Let me also clean up a bit. D minor above over here, E major. And then to make this third clip here, E major, scale root, D to an E, oh, B, not E flat, E, and then scale type major. Um, last thing too, which in case you don't know, so here um, in Ableton 11, which we're using, so when you're clicking and like uh, starting songs here, you might not see this by default, actually. You have to drag out, I believe. But uh, let me see. It might look like this. So if you just click here and you drag out of it, you'll see these new windows for Ableton 11 pop up. So song three, uh, if I look at the splice info, it says that the song is at 98 BPM. So if I click here and I type in 98 BPM, you'll see that our um, master kind of um, tempo will shift as I trigger the song. And then I trigger song two, which has 120 BPM uh, metronome marking. Session speeds up, right? So that's great. So now um, if we monitor auto-tune as I'm launching these songs, the first one starts, we're in D minor. Let's check it. Sorry, F minor for the first song. F minor is triggered over here. Yeah, I can sing in tune all day. Song two. Now we're in D minor. Oh, I can't, that's not the key. Da, 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 da. D minor, I don't know what I'm singing right now. Oh. And then song three, uh, if I trigger it. Yeah. This is a lot more relaxed than the other ones. Oh, I love the song so much, yeah. Oh, I know what I'm saying about today. And yeah, that's the little quick thing on how to automate uh, Waves Tune real time for live performance. Uh, if you like this video, I guess subscribe or whatever YouTubers tell you to do. Um, but yeah, hope you have a great day and use this well for live performances or studio stuff or whatever you want to. Have a good one, everyone.